In this video, I'm going to show you how to install fog lights on this Nissan Pathfinder. Of course, we're going to do both of them, not just one. And this comes with wiring because this particular vehicle does not already have fog lights. So this is not a replacement video. I'm going to show you how to install them. Let's get started. Let's start by removing all the push clips that hold this piece on. If you just use a trim tool, you should be able to pop out the center and then the entire push clip will come out go along the whole perimeter and get all of these removed. Of course, you want to set them aside safely so that you can reinstall all of them when the time comes. Pull this up and off. At this point, you'll notice the top of the grill for us is loose. Yours may not be this way because it should have a retaining clip here and one here. It's a little bit further down. You won't see it unless you look down there with a flashlight. Ours are broken, both of them. So someone's definitely been in here before, uh, but you should be able to just pull on it quickly and it should snap out of its uh, retainers. They're actually, the two clips are hooked into the headlight assemblies, but for us, this is already loose, so let's move along. Now on the side of the bumper cover where it meets the fender liner, you have several T20 Torx screws. Let's remove all three of these. This will release the fender liner off of the bumper cover, and this will make it so that we can peel it away. This will expose the 10 millimeter screw that sits right up here. So take this out. We go now let's do the same to the other side underneath you have more t20 fasteners one two three and then a couple push clips remove all of them push clip right here a lot of times these get stuck from sand buildups since they're underneath so just be careful if you break it make sure you replace it and just go along and uh, remove the rest of the push clips, which in our case are actually missing. So this is all disconnected already, uh, but you should have multiple. And then of course, the same three fasteners on the other side of the vehicle. Now we can pull the bumper cover away by just unclipping it along where it meets the fender. Continue following the uh, line, the curve of the bumper cover and pull this piece out. There we go. It's gonna sound a little scary, but I promise it's not breaking. It's just unclipping. And now we have two last push clips to undo. Last few pieces here behind the grill. You'll see some, some push clips. You're going to have to get these off of here because this actually holds the bumper cover in place on these brackets. In my case, these are super stuck, so they'll have to be pried out. Hopefully they don't break. There's one. And then there are two more in the center and another one on the other side. There we go. Break that off there. All right. This is going to have to get replaced, but at least it's out. Disconnect these two retainers for this wiring harness. Just pop them out of here. On the back side, they have a couple tabs that you can squeeze, or you could just twist that with a trim tool. It should pop out. There's another one right over here. All right, now pull the bumper cover away. Now to install this fog light. Again, this vehicle does not have fog lights. That's why we were doing this. So we have to take out this cover that uh, covers the hole for the fog light. Use a seven millimeter socket, remove the screw that holds this on. And other than the screw, it's gonna have three little metal clips that go around those. Well, one just fell off. The other ones can be removed. The new fog light will come with new uh, clips. Get these out of here. There we go. These are rusty and in poor condition anyway. So as you can see, the new cover, or now it's a ring, it's not a cover anymore, has new clips. And make sure you get the right side so that the bolt hole can line up. Line up this entire piece, press it on, thread this bolt back in, and let's snug it down all the way. 
Okay, nice and tight. This is locked in. Now we can put our fog light on. Before we do that, however, we need to put these little uh, retainers, one on this flat tab on the side and one on the bottom here. So slide these on with the wider base facing down. You're gonna wanna bottom these out completely, so press it until it stops. It'll basically just stop sliding down. And the other one goes right over here. Same way, press it down. Now you can take your fog light assembly. Of course, make sure it's the right side. If it's not, it just won't fit. So now you can line this up. These two holes need to line up with their retainers. Snap it into place. It'll kind of uh, lock in place. However, this is not the end of it. We need to secure it here and here. To secure this here, you could use some fasteners such as a nut, a bolt, a little clip, whatever you want, or you could use some push clips. This is what I have and it secures it just fine. This is the threaded kind. So I'm just gonna push it in the rest of the way, just like this. And as you can see, I did the same right up here and this does not even move. So we are good to go on this uh, front here. At this point, you would wanna do the same exact thing to the other side fog light. And then we can reinstall this and wire it all up. In the package, you'll have a bunch of wiring. So let's talk about what everything is. Of course, this is your switch. We'll set this aside. This goes inside of the cab of the vehicle. So um, basically on the dash, we're gonna deal with this later. This smaller harness right here is actually, as you can see, the same um, plug as the switch. This is what operates your switch inside. We're also gonna set this aside. We're gonna talk about it later. This is your main harness right here. It's long and it has a bunch of different wires to it. This red one that comes out of the relay is gonna be your main power wire. This is what's gonna feed power to your fog lights. So we're gonna ignore this part for now. We're not plugging it in until later. Uh, this then runs down and if you keep following it, it'll have a split here. This is one of your fog lights that splits and then keeps running so you can run it across to the other side, keeps going. This has a three-way split here. One of the wires is gonna be for your other fog light bulb. So it's gonna have this connector. So set that aside. This short black wire is gonna be your main ground. I'm gonna show you where to ground that. And then this last one is going to be a yellow wire you can see that it's yellow all, all the way on the end here. And what this is, is gonna be the signal wire that will be routed inside through the firewall so the switch can activate this whole circuit. The battery on this Pathfinder is gonna be on the driver's side front. So what I'm gonna do, because this wire is just long enough to reach, I'm actually, and this might seem a little strange, but I'll explain why I'm doing this. I'm putting the fuse and the, well, this is the fuse, this is the relay. I'm putting these on the passenger side front. I'm not attaching anything yet. I'm not securing anything yet. I'm gonna run this power wire across to the battery, not connect it yet. I'm just laying down this harness so I can see where everything is gonna sit. And I'm gonna go around the hood prop right over here, around this side. And I'm gonna run the wire underneath this corner of the headlight, just like so. Run it down behind it, behind this shield here. Basically, I'm trying to go out of the way of anything that it might get caught on. Then it's gonna exit underneath the headlight. We need the shorter uh, side of the fog light plug to come down onto the passenger side. And then the other part, we're gonna drape right over here. Now, of course, I'm not gonna just let it dangle here. I'm gonna properly secure it so it can go across in a secured manner. And then we have this one that's gonna lay down right over here. This yellow wire that goes into the car, we're gonna run back up on this side and then we're gonna lay down over there. We'll deal with this in a little bit. And this is why I chose this routing that goes like this, because the way the wiring harness is designed is so that you connect it here, you loop it around to the passenger side, connect that fog light. Meanwhile, it goes through the fuse in the relay, goes back, feeds the other fog light, grounds out, and then goes into the cab here so that you can actually power it all up with the switch. Over here on the passenger side, I have an excess of wire. I don't wanna just let it dangle here, so I'm gonna take a wire tie and secure it onto this other harness here. You don't have to make it super tight, just make it snug so it stays. This you can either cut off or just aim it that way so it's out of your way. Keep in mind if you cut it off, unless you have flush cutters, 
Oh, you're going to get hurt next time you scrape that. Uh, make sure this styrofoam piece doesn't fall off. And then this can stay right over here. We're going to follow this wire harness along. And then I'm going to wire tie it here and probably right over here just so it can follow the rest of this. This is routed here from the factory, so I know that this is where Nissan wants it to, uh, to sit. Take a little wire tie, do this, and then one over here. And we'll do another one probably right over here so I can follow the, uh, the curve here. All right. The relay and the fuse, uh, I'm, I might attach later, but I think this right here is a great spot for them. Uh, stick them right here. They will be wedged in there nicely. And this wire, you can either run across at the top here like I was mentioning earlier. However, I want to go one step further. I'm going to take this air duct or the in intake ducting off. It's a 10 millimeter bolt on the top of it. Mine has a nut underneath. Yours shouldn't, but uh, I think someone's already been in here and broke the factory mounting hardware. So this is what I have, but it should still be a 10 millimeter. Take this off on the other side as well. With those off, you should be able to pull this up and away. And now we gain access to this area, which is where I want to run my wire. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to go underneath the radiator hose. Obviously, be very careful when you do this. You want to make sure it's out of the way of anything such as the fan, exhaust, anything that moves. Um, so right here is actually a good, good place to run it, right where this other wire is running. Looks like there's a factory hook here. I'm going to do that. I'm also going to wire tie it here in a little bit. I don't want to run it underneath this bracket. I actually want to run it over just like this. It might look a little bit weird, but underneath it is where the fans are. So I want to stay out of the way of those. And then it looks like there's more wiring on this side, so I can attach it right onto this hook here. Just like so. Perfect. So I'll wire it tight here. And here, it swoops right over to the battery. So that's perfect. Let's wire tie the wire. This is uh, the hood latch cable. I'll just tie it onto that. Cut off the excess. I'm going to point this down. So it is sharp. There we go, just like that. This has plenty of space here. Um, I don't necessarily like running a positive right across the negative, so I probably go right this way, just like that. And then if you come over here, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to tie it right onto this bracket just so it doesn't move around. And right over here. You can put this back now if you took it out. Like I said, you don't have to. Make sure it's seated properly. I get my bolt through and of course I had the, uh, the nut on the bottom here. You shouldn't have this. This is a repair. these up. To ground this out, I'm going to choose to go right here on this factory ground. I'm going to take this bolt out. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. Now, if you don't have a lot of rust buildup, you don't have to take it all the way out because this is slotted. So technically, you could slide it right in here, but I want to clean things up. I want everything to have a proper ground, and I especially don't want to mess with this ground right here. I need this to take priority and be properly grounded over my fog lights, of course. So I'm going to pull the bolt out, inspect everything. I do have a clean, well, somewhat clean surface here. This is all right. That's normal that this is painted. I will uh, brush into the threads a little bit, the head of the bolt right here where the flanged part is, the washer. I'm going to clean this off too because that's what needs to contact this. And then I'm gonna sandwich all of this back together with a bolt just like that. Take a wire brush, just brush this off. 
that already looks a lot better. Perfect. Now this, like I said, don't take the paint off of this. This is meant to be painted. I'm going to stick my bristles of the brush in the hole, clean those threads, clean the backside just a little bit. All right. And now I'm going to do the same to the bolt here. Just brush it. You can see how much corrosion is coming off. If you want to just install a new bolt, that would also work. It's a six by one thread pitch, but uh, this is good enough to be cleaned and reused. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be better. And I'd say pretty much achieved that. The grounding will take place through the threads once again, not anything else. Okay, let's install it. I uh, cleaned up the bolt just a little more. I'm gonna put it back. And like I said, this connector is slotted, so I'm not worried about uh, starting it on the bolt first. What I'm gonna do is start the bolt in and then slide this over then continue tightening this. And you'll notice that I didn't put any sort of anti-seize or uh, grease, silicone paste, dielectric grease, anything like that on the bolt. That's because I want it to make a good connection. The way you properly seal it is by putting that stuff on the outside once it's on here. So I'm gonna tighten it, make sure it's properly secured. Make sure this wire doesn't slide out. Snug it. And now I will apply some silicone paste which is also dielectric grease, right on the outside of this, especially on the back side where there are threads sticking out because that's where the water is also going to make its way in. And then coat the outside where you cleaned. All of this bare metal surface will corrode and prevent a good contact if you don't cover it with some sort of anti-corrosive coating, which in this case is dielectric grease. I'm going to do the best I can to get the back side here and I'd say this looks pretty good it's safe and protected from the elements now let's get the bumper cover reattached pay attention to your fenders and your headlights so that you don't scratch anything make sure that this white piece here the uh, the bracket needs to go nice and flush with the bumper so under the headlight it needs to line up all throughout the other side here that looks good so at this point I'm gonna tap it into place Make sure this lines up. Okay. I know this might seem a little rough, but that's, that's how you get these to clip in. Do the same to the other side. Now plug in your fog light bulbs. Make sure the connector clicks. By the way, since I'm here, I'm gonna show you this right here is the adjuster where you would aim the beam up or down at the end when we're done. You wanna make sure that the beam isn't too low or too high so that they can function properly. Now do the same to the other side, plug in the bulb so we can put all the fasteners for the shields back. Now let's get the screw in that secures the bumper right on the corner here, snug that up. Now we can tuck the fender liner back in. Make sure that the ears that have the holes in them stay on the outside, that's where the screws go through, but these tabs have to go on the inside. That's how it secures. And now we can put the three T20 screws back in. Snug these up. Don't make them too tight. They're just going into plastic. And if you strip the plastic out, well, it's not going to get tight anymore. All right, let's go underneath. Let's put the push clips in, whatever you have for push clips. And then the uh, T20 screws. Snug these up over here. and then do this same thing to the other side. Now behind the grill, let's put the push clips back. That'll lock the bumper cover in, slide that through, and then lock it in by sliding the center in. This one's not gonna be very easy to do just because it's extremely limited on space here. Once you get it, press it all the way down. Do the same to the other ones. There are two in the middle, and then one just like that one on the other side. Get these through and the centers. Oh, there we go. There we go. Get that in. 
There is a uh, wiring harness here that we have to hook back on. You got one retainer over here and one over here. Perfect. If you still have the two retainers here and here, mine are broken, but clip those in. And now we can put this cover on, make sure everything lines up and let's get all the push clips reinstalled. Now it's time to get this harness fed through the firewall. If you look on the driver's side right behind the strut tower to the right of your brake booster, you'll see that rubber boot there with the main harness that runs into the cabin of the vehicle. And that's exactly where I'm gonna run this wire through. And the easiest way to do this, I mean, maybe you have other methods or other ideas where to run it. I have an old coat hanger here, a metal one that I uh, straightened out and I made this into a point. I just filed it into a point. What I'm gonna do is go inside. I'll show you exactly where that grommet is on the inside. I'm gonna stick this coat hanger through. It's gonna poke out through the grommet out on this side, and then I will be able to pull this through, attach the wire to it on this side right here, kind of like this, electrical tape it, pull this right back through, and this is gonna feed that wire for me instead of me trying to reach there, which is basically impossible to reach from both ends. So let me show you what it looks like inside. Now from the inside, if you look to the left of the brake pedal, this is the brake pedal right here, this is your parking brake pedal, you'll see that thick wiring harness running through. I already stuck my hand there and peeled the insulation back a little bit. This is not gonna be an easy spot to be in. And I'm gonna stick my coat hanger through there. We'll see, the, we'll see what angle I can get it at. Yeah, I'm going to try my best here. I don't want to poke any wires, of course. I have to be very gentle. I can feel it's poking in. And all right, so I broke through. Let's look at the other side and see what happens. Now you're going to want to stick your hand in here and pull it through as much as you can. This is why I chose this coat hanger. Because after I uh, straighten it out, it's somewhat long, so I have quite a bit of material to work with. Now let's tape this up onto our coat hanger. You don't need a lot of tape. You basically want the tape as thin as possible. What I'm also gonna try and do is uh, kind of squeeze this down. The sheathing on this wire is a little larger than the wire itself. And sure, you could peel back that sheathing if you want, or you could just kind of squeeze it down with the electrical tape. And the reason for that is so that it can actually go through that hole that we created in the, uh, in the rubber boot. On the end here, I'm gonna get the electrical tape to go past the end of the wire because it'll create kind of like a smooth transition between the wire and the tape. And another thing I will do is I'm actually going to coat this entire area with some silicone paste. Silicone paste is, I mean, you could really use any other kind of grease um, just to make it slide nice and easy. One more thing is the reason I use so much wire on this is so that it has a lot of clamping force between the tape and the coat hanger so that as I pull it through, you can see obviously this is pretty much twice the thickness of the hole we just created. So in the combination of all of this force holding it together and the silicone paste, this should be nice and smooth, ready to slide through. So I'm just gonna get some silicone paste on here. You don't have to put a thick amount on, but just a little bit, enough to make it slippery. It's gonna be annoying to take off at the end, but uh, we can just cut the tape. This will be a whole lot easier to do this than it will be to uh, try to pull it through with dry rubber on dry electrical tape. Okay. Now let's go inside and pull it through. Now, let's pull it back through. Hopefully, that'll slide right in. We got our wire over here. It looks like that's the end of the wire. So uh, let's get this silicone paste off of here so I can peel off the electrical tape and we'll continue with our wiring. And I'm just gonna unravel the whole thing. That's it for that. 
And that's it for that. Here's our wire. We'll make sure it's out of the way of everything and let's get the rest of the harness plugged in. With our wire ran, it's time to mount the switch. This is the switch that is provided. It fits perfectly on one of these panels. Hopefully you still have one that's open. Uh, most cars will. So choose which location you want it on, depending on how many options you have. These, like I said, either might be almost full, if not full, or like this one, mostly empty. So it doesn't, I'm, I'm not gonna pick right now uh, where I want it. I just wanna get this panel off because popping these blank plates out is actually more difficult than it seems and uh, you can't just pry them out. We have to unbolt this whole panel from the backside so we can actually get access to the clips that hold these on. There's one on the top, one on the bottom. You can't get to them. What I want is to pull away this part of the kick panel. To do that, we have to pull this piece off. So I'm gonna stick a plastic trim tool in here. The reason I'm using a plastic trim tool is so I don't damage the surface. There we go. Stick it in here, pry this away. Move it to the side. That will expose a Phillips head screw right down there. That's pretty much everything holding this in uh, on this side, except for some push clips. Okay, so take that out. Now you can pry this away, just like so. And behind here, this is the entire switch panel. If you can pop one of these plates out, great, go for it. I can't because there's a clip at the top and a clip underneath and there's nothing you can get in there to actually unclip it. So I'm gonna unplug the two wires that I do have here and then it's just a bunch of uh, Phillips head screws. You're probably gonna need a short screwdriver for this. Take all five out and this whole switch panel should come out of here and then we can pop these uh, switches off on a workbench where we can actually access things underneath. Make sure you don't lose these. If you don't put them all back, this panel will be a little floppy. So every time you push a button, it's not gonna stay nice and sturdy. It's gonna push in. There are two symmetrically on this side. With all five out, you should be able to pop this uh, panel off of here. There we go. The reason we have to unbolt both is because this, this lower one actually sits on top of this upper one here. But we're not gonna remove the lower one. Um, I'm probably just gonna use this upper one. And uh, I'm thinking I'll put the fog light switch right over here. So from the back side, you can see that it has these, uh, these clips that need to be pried up. This will be a little tricky, so pry and push the uh, cover out at the same time, flip it over while pushing it, pry the other side, and there we go, now it pops out. So all that for just this, because uh, now we can take our switch, make sure it's facing the right way, plop it in, make sure it's secure, it is, now we can mount this back up. And then the lower one that goes over. And take your screws, put them all back together. And don't forget to tighten them up, of course. These are tight again, and uh, I'm not gonna clip this back in at the moment. What I wanna do is actually take the rest of the harness, plug it in, route it and secure it. While I have full access here, it'll just be a lot easier. Then I will clip this back in. So here's the rest of the harness, green connector to green connector. Click it in, and uh, I'm gonna wrap this up like this and use a wire tie to uh, secure it. It's quite long, which is good. You definitely want 
all this extra harness in case you need to run it in odd places here and get it out of the way, of course, of the pedals, but uh, it is a little long. So let's tie it together. I'll take a wire tie, get this resecured. All right, so that's tied. Reconnect this, perfect. Tuck this in here. And I already have a ground picked for this. Of course, the yellow wire is gonna go down to our other yellow wire. I'll tuck it up later. Uh, the power wire here, that needs to be connected to a power source. I'm gonna pick a fuse on the fuse box. I, well, technically, I already have one picked. I'm gonna talk about this in a minute. For now, I wanna ground it. It looks like I have a screw right here. This is actually for a remote start that this vehicle already has, but um, if you don't have a screw here, you could just pick anything else that is bolted onto a metal frame of the dash. It's grounded. If you doubt that it's grounded, just grab a multimeter and test for power. You should have ground here. So what I'm gonna do is remove the screw a little bit and uh, stick, the, stick this wire in just a little, just like this. It is slotted, so that helps. There we go. And I'm gonna tighten it back up. Um, it looks like this screw actually connects this piece to this piece, so whether you have a wire on it already or not, you should have the screw, so go ahead and use that. Get this wiring out of the way here. Let's connect the yellow wire, and I'm gonna run this right over this dash support here near the fuse box, and I'm gonna grab it from behind. There we go. Pull it through most of the way, and uh, let's connect it onto this one. press it on all the way so it makes a good good connection and of course we're going to tuck this up here out of the way of everything I'm actually going to pull it through it's going underneath the uh, hood release cable I don't like that I'm going to actually disconnect it and run it up and over I don't want it to get tangled on anything comes with this insulator make sure that stays on here so it doesn't make connection and now now I'll pull it back through there we go that's nice and out of the way it's gonna stay up here and here I'm gonna tie these all up I don't like it when they're dangling but uh, I'm gonna wait for the power wire to be connected because instead of tying a bunch of different wire ties I'm just gonna tie the entire harness basically like this. Now it's finally time to connect the switch to power and you are gonna to wanna to find a fuse that ideally is not used. This is the case for most vehicles. There is always a fuse that is here, but the option for that isn't attached to the vehicle, whether um, it's, I don't know, fog lights, heated seats, uh, power mirrors, other adjustable features that might not exist in your particular vehicle. For me, it's actually heated seats. This vehicle has an option for heated seats and it's wired for it. This is the fuse for it right here, but it doesn't have heated seats. So what I'm gonna do, because this fuse has power, I'm actually gonna take the fuse puller out of here, take this fuse out. It's a 15 amp fuse and not that I actually need 15 amps. What we're doing here is just providing power to the switch, not the actual fog lights that we installed. So pull that fuse out I'm gonna put my fuse puller back in. And then I have this uh, fuse splitter. It basically takes one signal and splits it into two. What I'm gonna do is insert that right into here. And it has a wire that feeds that current to said wire. Now, if you had the heated seat option and you still wanted to tap into this, or if you wanna tap into a fuse that is used, First of all, make sure it has adequate power um, reserve, so to speak. So if it's a five amp fuse, I probably wouldn't tap into it. I would go a little bit higher. And then you're gonna wanna fill both of these slots. Now for our wire right here, we're drawing very little. A five or a 10 amp fuse will be sufficient. However, in that first slot, you're gonna wanna put the original fuse that came out of it. So for us, it's the 15 amp, but we don't have heated seats. So I'm actually gonna put it in the slot that I'm using right here. There we go, press it down all the way. So this will basically 
take power from the circuit that is in here and give me power over here. And in my case, to re-enable it, I would just have to put a fuse back in there. But once again, this seat doesn't have a heated seat pad, so I have nothing to connect in there. Now let's take this wire and our red power wire, and of course, red to red. This one comes pre-cut here at the end. There's no uh, insulation. I'm going to stick it right in here. This is just a crimp connector that uh, our adapter comes with. I'm going to put it in here, use some uh, wire crimpers, and crimp it down. There we go. Always test your connection by pulling on it. If it comes back out, you didn't connect it properly, you didn't crimp it right, so you'd have to cut this off and try it again. This one's nice and strong, so at this point what we need to do is tuck up all this wiring. You don't want it dangling around here where your foot can get caught on it. Then we'll put all this back together and test out the fog lights. Take all your excess wiring, tie it together. You can leave a little slack in it, it's actually better to do that because if you have to pull this panel back out, you don't want it to tug on the wire. All right, tie this nice and snug. Perfect. Now, let's get this panel reinstalled here. Line everything back up. It's got some uh, retainers up here, some down here. Press it back in. I had the Phillips head screw that secured it right over here. Snug it, don't crush this down, you'll break the plastic. And then of course, this cover, it has uh, on the back side a bunch of clips that need to line up, by the way. So slide it in and then press it on. All right, let's connect the fog lights to the battery. Now let's connect the fog lights to the battery terminal, the positive, so we can give the whole circuit power. Take a 10 millimeter wrench and remove this mounting nut here for the clamp. And then we're gonna put this right over. Now if you have other wiring here, you're gonna to wanna to prioritize that, uh, but Stick this right on here, put this mounting nut back on. And of course, if you have corrosion built up here, you're gonna to wanna to clean it up, otherwise it won't make a good connection. So let's tighten this back up. Make it nice and snug. You don't have to crush this down completely. It will actually damage the terminal if you do. So as long as it's snug and you can't move this around, you're good to go. Run the wire wherever you like. And now, let's test them out. It all works. And if you wired it all correctly, and they have proper power. The fog lights, well, the switch, first of all, with the ignition in the on position, there we go, that should light up, and it does, and then when you press it, not only will the fog lights turn on, this light at the bottom will turn on also, indicating that the fog lights are on, according to the switch, which I can look right now out the windshield, and yep, they are on. Both of them are working. Press it once again, and they shut off. But also, because we wired it to an accessory power source, I can leave them on, shut off the vehicle, and they just shut off, meaning that there is no way that you can forget your fog lights on because they will not have power with the ignition off. So make sure you don't wire it to a source of continuous power unless that's what you want, but that means you can easily forget them on and drain your battery. Now adjust them so they don't aim too high or too low and take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.